Is how goddamn boring will it be? Sitting here February 10th, 2025, and it's damn. The cheese just won again, huh? We just went through that for six months to get the same results we got a year ago. The moment you've all been waiting for, the returning back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, headlined by a guy by the name of Patrick Mahomes. Maybe you've heard of him. So 2023 season for the Chiefs just threw away a lot of the things I believed about football and thought I believed about football. <laughs> like, the offensive line struggles to protect the quarterback. Your season is doomed. Nope. One Super Bowl anyways. Got receiving core that can't hold on to the ball. Your season's doomed. Nope. Won a Super Bowl anyways. Off-field distractions <laughs> impedes your ability to win a Super Bowl. No, how about our tight end dates one of the biggest superstars in the world? That becomes the dominant headline of our season. Win the Super Bowl anyways. <laughs> and now they are on a mission to be the first team in NFL history to win three straight Super Bowls in a row. So I will not ask the question whether they're gonna miss the playoffs or win the Super Bowl, because I think both of us agree that at minimum they're making the playoffs, right? Correct, AFC Championship. Okay, so instead, we're gonna switch the question to, if the Chiefs do not win the Super Bowl, it will be because of blank. Had to be the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> You were the <laughs> faith you have in the Raiders is mind blowing to me, buddy. Oh, and I'm god. a Denver fan. <laughs> oh, oh my god. All right, reason one the Raiders. What's reason two? <laughs> well, we didn't fix our offensive line. Like, why Jesus can only get away from the, so, the Wolves for so long? See, and, and that's kind of my thing with that, too, because they let Donovan Smith still be unemployed, and to an extent, I get it. Aging tackle, Jawan Taylor's still there, and he by himself had like 19 penalties last year. I know that sounds like I'm exaggerating. I'm not. You can look that one up on Pro Football Focus. He's still there, and the replacement for Donovan Smith is a rookie, the guy from BYU whose name I cannot pronounce, Kingsley something. Kingsley something. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Patrick Mahomes is one of the most pressured quarterbacks outside of the commanders who let up the most, the second most sacks, and the Giants who let up the most sacks and had 300 quarterbacks last year. How long are you going to be able to rely on the, ah, oh, Mahomes will take care of it and make sure he doesn't die? <laughs> like, ah, that is a little rough. Reason three I'll put in. So there's been all these headlines about, uh, how much they fixed the receiving core, correct? Correct. And look, you look at what it was last year, can't get much worse. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that they're worse. However, if the goal is to sign receivers so you don't have to worry about drops, find your nearest Raven fan <laughs> and ask them about how much Hollywood Brown drops passes and clear the rest of your day. <laughs> <laughs> because they're, because they're gonna have some stories for you let me tell you it's not only just him though i think xavier worthy is very exciting i think the prospect of we got rid of tyreek hill a couple years back hey look we just signed another one is great if that ends up coming to fruition he's also 160 pounds and a rookie what what are we really what are we expecting him to do this year off rip like just immediately stepping into the league and being the number one receiver for the best quarterback in the league that's a lot to ask rasheed rice doesn't look like he's gonna get suspended but if he it's more so if he was we'd know by now <laughs> but who knows maybe goodell had other things to do and he'll wait till before the game but i don't know it, it's hard for me to look at that receiving core and be like all right this is a good set of receivers now outside of the fact that we just don't want to doubt the chiefs anymore well for me i feel like they Fixed the wide receiver with picking up Xavier Howard. Give uh, Xavier Mahomes. Xavier Worthy. Oh, sorry, Xavier Worthy. They um, Rasheed Rice was his number one target outside of Travis Kelsey, of course. And so, like that gives them another dynamic for the defense to worry about, rather than double team Kelsey and double team Rice, and then the only other person you got to worry about is. So my, and I want to be with you because. Having that deep threat back on this offense, people already back the hell off when you're playing Mahomes because he can throw the ball over the moon to anybody. But now that you have someone that runs a 4-2 on the team, it completely changes the geometry of what you're trying to do as a defense. But again, rookie that weighs the same amount as a sophomore in high school. So it's kind of hard to, <laughs> kind of hard for me to balance the two. The final reason why the Kansas City Chiefs if they don't win the Super Bowl, it'll be because of blank. Because no other team ever has put three-peated, ever. Think of how many Super Bowls we have had. 
No team ever in the history of ever has pulled this off. I will run through all the teams who have tried. First and foremost, we have the 1967 and 1968 Packers. Packers. This one's a technicality because <laughs> technically they did three-peat. 1966, they won the NFL championship. The Super Bowl wasn't a thing yet. And then they won the next two Super Bowls. So technically, they did three-peat. But the category is Super Bowls. But the reason they didn't win the third Super Bowl is simple. Vince Lombardi, one of the greatest coaches ever, retired. Andy Reid is still coaching. So we can knock that reason off the list. <laughs> next, we got the 1973-1974 Bron- uh, Dolphins. You may have heard of the 72-73 Dolphins. The undefeated team, 14-0 arguably the greatest team ever, ran through everybody and everyone, and then won the Super Bowl the next year with a with a different quarterback because Don Shula's the man. Year three, they tried to win it again and lost in the sea of hands game. For y'all that are unfamiliar with the game, the game ended, it was the AFC Championship against the Oakland Raiders, the then Oakland Raiders, led by John Madden before he was the face of the biggest football video game in the world. He was the head coach of the Raiders for, again, I've got to remember sometimes I have a young audience that doesn't know these things. <laughs> and that game ended on a eight yard touchdown pass from Kenny the Snake Stabler to Clarence Davis into who's a running back, by the way, into triple coverage. If this video will not get taken down, if I post the clip, I will post it as I'm saying this. It's one of the craziest things you'll ever see. Ar- like arguably one of the greatest plays in NFL history. So it took a fluke miracle <laughs> for them not to three-peat. So fluke miracle still on the list for the Chiefs. Next up, 74-75 Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm sorry, 75 and 76 Pittsburgh Steelers. The first, the first repeat of the Steelers season. They lost in the AFC Championship to, you guessed it, John Madden and the Raiders again. <laughs> because John, John Madden, John Madden and the Raiders, they were they were the guys back then. It, it just was what it was with those guys. Next up, Steelers again, 79 and 80. They missed the playoffs the third year because every player on that team, Joe Green, Terry Bradshaw, Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, they were all above 30. That's like 35 going on 40 in today's time. They were they were all done. They were all cooked. Only person on the Chiefs you have to worry about that with is Travis Kelsey. Next up, 1989 and the 1990 49ers. I could argue that the 91 team that ended up not completing the three-peat might have been the best 49ers team of all. That was the second year without Bill Walsh, second year George Seifert. Joe Montana as a starter went 13-1 and and was absolutely ridiculous that year. Won MVP. Insane year. The reason they didn't win was a little-known defense coordinator by the name of William Belichick (laughs) with the New York Giants who held MVP Joe Montana and the vaunted 49ers offense to a whopping 13 points and 240 total yards in the NFC Championship as the Giants won without scoring a single touchdown, 15 to 13. So next option, we got incredible defense on the other side of the ball. So that would put Ravens, Steelers, and is there another dominant defense in the AFC I'm not thinking of at the moment? Jets, question mark? (laughs) As of right now, no. But okay. if you look at previous Denver defense, that's where they were. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say you'd be acting for a lot for Denver to be back <laughs> in that spot. Three teams left. 93-94 uh, Dallas Cowboys. Lost in the 1995 championship. Now, it's the NFC championship. Now, you could say it's because Jimmy Johnson got fired. That's the start of the Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones beef where they, it finally came to a head and they got into it. You could say it's because of that, but really it was just because Steve Young would not be denied. <laughs> that was the monster Steve Young year. If you watch NFL films, the Steve Young wins the Super Bowl. Somebody get this monkey off my back. That, that was that year where he was just tired of hearing the you're not Joe Montana stuff and he was a man on a mission. There was no stopping him that year. So that would be the... Lamar Jackson is sick of everybody's shit <laughs> and has decided, fuck all of you, I'm winning the Super Bowl this year. 89, I'm sorry, 1998, 1999 Denver Broncos, a team I'm sure you remember fondly. Yes, sir. They go back to back with the Mike Shanahan, John Elway, Terrell Davis, Shannon Sharp. That Them boys go back to back. 
the reason that they missed the playoffs the final year simple john elway retired <laughs> shannon sharp and terrell davis played a combined nine games last i checked patrick mahomes will be playing this season and travis kelsey and isaiah pacheco hopefully will play more than a combined nine games so we could throw that one out the window as well <laughs> last up my new england patriots 2003 to 2004 they lost the 2005 AFC Divisional Round to, again, your Denver Broncos. Because for whatever the hell reason, we couldn't beat the Broncos that year. <laughs> they beat us in a regular season that year, too. This is the first one in my conscious life, because in 98, I was like two. So I don't even remember that one. <laughs> so yeah. this is the first one of my conscious life I can remember. And the reason they lost this one, outside of the fact that the Broncos just had their number, both coordinators for the Patriots left the year prior. Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell, Romeo Cornell both left. Charlie Weiss wants to go coach Notre Dame. Romeo Cornell was the coach of the Browns or Texans, Texans first. One of them, he coached for both. I can't remember which one was first. I feel like it's the Texans. So our op and again, Steve Spagnola and Matt Nagy still coaching there. So we can throw that one out the way. <laughs> so our options for keeping the Chiefs out of the Super Bowl. <laughs> Our Lamar Jackson gets sick of everybody's shit and has a Steve Young year. An incredible defense shuts down the Chiefs completely. Or an incredible head coach and coach combo ends up finally rip, uh, shaping out in the form a la John Madden and Kenny Stabler. I think the candidate for that would probably be CJ Stroud. So essentially we're down to the three teams that'll be in Super Bowl contention in the AFC would be the Chiefs, Raiders, and Texans. Well, I think everyone, that's consensus for all of them. Is it rough that I still think it's gonna be the, I know I said Texans earlier in one of these previews. It's so hard to not pick the Chiefs. Even, even as I just laid all that out, it's so hard to not say the Chiefs are gonna win again. Yeah, you can't bet against my homes. I learned that last year. <laughs> Same, bro. And it's like, bro, like I think literally after the Ravens game, the video I did right afterwards was, you know what, bro? We're just gonna have to wait for Mahomes to go play baseball or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't I don't know. Cause even with all the dysfunctional team, people get too big for their britches, you lose all the talent when you keep winning. That was last year. <laughs> like all, all the things that happen that prevent teams from being successful, all the cliches, all the stereotypes. All that shit happened last year and they won anyways. <laughs> they won anyways. Like, <sighs> <laughs> so hopefully somewhere in that spiel, I gave enough y'all reason to pick against the Chiefs. It's hard for me. My heart tells me I want to see CJ Stroud and Lamar Jackson pull off winning their first Super Bowl for the sake of our enjoyment of the NFL. Because how goddamn boring will it be if we're sitting here February 10th, 2025, and it's damn the cheese just won again huh we just went through that for six months to get the same results we got a year ago well another point on the chiefs they lost the jerry sneed which i feel he was the second best cornerback behind patrick Sertan. and uh, I, before the preseason like when i saw that i was like well the defense is going down the drain but after i watched the preseason games like the defense hasn't skipped the beat they're still on top of everybody offense I mean, that, that's the whole, I mean, preseason offenses, blah, 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 whatever. But you look at the personnel on this team. Chris Jones obviously re-signed. Nick Bolden, heart and soul of the defense. Justin Reed. And they're coached by Steve Spagnola. So the floor on that defense is still pretty high. They're only going to be but so bad. And then my concern, though, less concern, more so intrigue. Trent McDuffie isn't really an outside corner. That's not really what he's here for. But if he is in the outside corner, they don't have one. So, <laughs> so <laughs> he kind of has no choice but to be out there. That's why I love that Sneed and McDuffie combo so much last year as a duo. Because we've never really had cornerback tandems where one plays the nickel and one plays an outside corner. That was kind of the first of its kind. Hey, Legereus, get your money, I understand. But damn, I really wish I could have saw that for another five years. I guess I got to ask this. It is February 10th, 2025, day after the Super Bowl. The headline of the Kansas City Chiefs season is what? Who can stop us? <laughs> God damn it. it. It hurts my soul that uh, it's so hard to disagree with that. But I'm going to go the other way for the sake of good, of good content. The witch is dead. 
<laughs> they finally killed the witch. God damn it. The Chiefs finally lost. I don't know if that's going to be in the Super Bowl or the AFC Championship or whatever, but God damn it. The Chiefs finally lost. Kind of hard to beat Andy Reid. And you just got the snow and that frozen mustache. He goes into God mode. Oh, man. If, if you see Andy Reid with the frozen mustache, just go ahead and pack it up. <laughs> just go ahead and pack it up. Go back, go back to the whip. It's over. All right. I uh, want to thank my man Anton Allen for coming on the podcast with me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Of course. And to everybody listening, it's going to be a great, great season. I cannot fucking wait for this to start. The posting schedule might change for the podcast. Don't know yet. I'm going to figure that one out on the fly. But thank you, everybody, for listening. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe. Tell your grandmother to subscribe to the gambling show so she can make some money too, get some new dentures. And we will catch y'all next week.